welcome to my reading corner. Since I usually sit to read, let's just sit together. I have a little secret to tell you. I used to hate reading. Yes, you heard that right. I used to hate reading. Well, imagine spending four years of your life analyzing literature in Spanish, German, and English. It got downright annoying after a while and the literature started to blur into one. And then I got nitpicked to death by my advisor who told me in the last minute, you need to change your, your topic or the way you write things because it's not translated correctly. I'm thinking, you waited three weeks to tell me this? That somewhat killed my desire to read. Plus, I had just been dumped by somebody and I was saying, I feel like I'm stupid. Maybe that's one reason they dumped me because they're all their friends with PhDs, etc. And I've got a BA. Well, if you want to increase your vocabulary, then what you can do is read. You can write all these uh, words down. That's why I love to read, said my mom. So that was another reason to not read is because it reminded me of how stupid I was feeling. But then an interesting thing happened. I realized that I wasn't getting ahead in life. And after getting my certification in life coaching and realizing all these people read. Okay, well, we acquired a franchise for personal development that pointed out how to improve professionally, financially, and personally, all those people read. Since it was a skill building community, I thought, okay, I better do what they're doing because they have the success that I want. And the more that I read, it happened to be self-help books that were disguised as business books. I realized, wow, this is actually interesting and it's fun. And I forgot how much I loved reading as a kid. Even though the Ramona Quimby books didn't, uh, or the Beverly Cleary books didn't exactly help me with my interpersonal skills, but they helped me when I felt lonely. So I got back into it. And as uh, we both were reading more, the business grew more, the promotions came more, simply because we were learning interpersonal skills as and why they were important. Sounds like a no-brainer, but learning about people, as if you go to Jacqueline's book club, you'll understand yourself better. But there's also the escape side of it. So I'm going to be combining three E's, triple E. Could be technically E squared, but triple E sounds more fun. Entertainment, education, and entrepreneurship. Those are the things I get out of books. Now the workshop aspect of this is going to be that you're going to be putting into the chat, even though I don't like the chat button, there are good ways to use the chat button. In this case, it will be, you'll be filling in what books you like, what you recommend, and what you got out of them maybe, or the ways that you read. Well, for now, since we're going to be starting with the entertainment part of it, raise your hands if you're familiar with Irma Bombeck. Okay. One way of utilizing a book for entertainment is not only to read to yourself, could be written uh, read out loud if your problem is falling asleep, you can, read out loud, which also happens to help with your elocution skills. In my case, I ended up with a really big print book. I don't remember why, but it's kind of funny. So you can laugh at, at the size of it. Well, it doesn't show that well, but it's a big print book. This one is called, When You Look Like Your Passport Photo, It's Time to Go Home, which I can totally relate to because mine turned out really bad. Whoops, the, what the heck? Oh, here she is. There's Irma Bombeck. She wrote the column in the 80s about being a housewife and she was hilarious. She was a bestseller. I really miss her. This one is about her trips with her husband. Two days passed in Tahiti. Two days of lounging around the pool in a business suit. I told him, stick a lamp cord in your ear and everyone will think you're a secret service agent. On the fourth day out, I convinced him his luggage had gone to that big Bermuda Triangle in the sky. He simply had to go shopping because he had lost his luggage. Port Moresby looked like the best shot to pull together a wardrobe, considering it is the capital city of Papua New Guinea and the main gateway to the South Pacific. 
It would probably offer the best shopping before we went into the highlands of the Wagi Valley, the small towns of Lei and Madang, or the primitive villages dotting the Sepik River. We expected the selection of clothes to be limited. Remember, he lost his luggage. That was a given, but we didn't anticipate the real problem of shopping in Port Moresby. Papua New Guinea has an indigenous population. Its people are the products of dozens of ethnic groups, mostly Melanesians. There are bearded highlanders, hook nose out, lowlanders, men who wear body armor, wig men, mud men, war warriors, fishermen, farmers, and mountaineers. With the exception of the people of the North Solomons, they all have one thing in common. They are short, real short. They don't walk under coffee tables, but most of them are no more than four feet tall. When my husband, who is six feet tall and wears a size 12 shoe, walked into the menswear department in Port Moresby, the salesman didn't know whether to launch him or erect him in the center of town and direct traffic around him. In metric, he was awesome. There are a few Australians in the city, but mostly you're looking at little people who go around talking earnestly to belt, buckle, belt buckles. I must also add that Papua New Guineans are the world's friendliest people. Upon meeting you, they will grasp your hand excitedly, say good morning, and begin a conversation. In the bush, the greetings are a little more graphic, and then push in your chest with both of their hands. When I asked how the men greeted one another, our guide said, you don't want to know. I have found that reading to each other in the car, the passenger reading, <laughs> not the driver, it's a fantastic way to even practice for voiceovers. It's a great way to stay awake and to just entertain each other. And it can sure beat the listening to an audio book, which sometimes puts a person to sleep. So why not? Just keep in mind you're looking at the person you're reading to because otherwise you can really feel like you're gonna vomit just from the motion. And then the education bit. Imagine using one of these and one of these. Post-it pads and a highlighter. Now, if you're the type who buys the book instead of checking the book out, well, you can highlight to death, that works. In fact, take notes in the book, whatever works for you, but take note of the words that you haven't seen before. Argue with the author, write comments in the side of it so that you can really fully understand what you're reading if you have reading comprehension issues like I do. Oh no, the fan's about to turn. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Hold on a second here. <laughs> and uh, just a moment, please. Awesome, she saves the day. <laughs> so, and then the light turns off. Yay! So the other aspect of it is for education, you want to find books where you're going to be learning something and not just affirming what you already know. Now here comes part of the mini workshop aspect of it. What books have you read in the long span of your lifetime that you feel were really gripping in terms of, wow, I had no idea about this, or thanks for finally explaining something I've been trying to explain to other people. And I'll be reading your comments voraciously here in the chat. So the book, as well as something you learn from it. And I'll give you a moment or two and then I'll tell you one of mine. Do, 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 sorry. Can any, everybody hears me okay? Yeah. Ooh, Howard Gardner, Multiple Intelligence Theory. Wow, there's some light reading. <laughs> oh, that's great. That sounds really interesting. 
sooner, safer, happier. Ooh. Our iceberg is melting. Different ways people can deal with change and how we can bring them along in the, ooh, in the change journey. Ooh, I like it. Spark. It is about exercise and the brain. Oh, I like it. Now, the one I remember reading that really opened my eyes was The Magic of Thinking Big. And it was written, I think, in the 50s, and yet it's even truer today. It was talking about how most people are anxious about what others think about them, which is one reason why people are anxious about talking with others, because they already feel self-conscious to begin with. Well, imagine how it is when you know everyone's opinions because they flaunt them on social media. So if you're afraid of what other people think about you, don't waste your time. They're wondering the same thing. <laughs> you know? Just enjoy asking about them and genuinely giving a damn. And it'd be amazing how much easier the world will work. I was just astounded to read that. And I thought, well, geez, who needs anxiety medication when you're doing that? It's, it's pretty cool. Let's see here, the other one, your next five moves by Patrick Bet David, which is PBD. Plan your next move rather than just reacting. Woo! Well, what I would recommend you all do, since I didn't make a list of books, although I will type in the chat my preferred top five books, just do a screenshot. You're allowed to do a screenshot and it's a great way to remember different topics. The tipping point, ooh. I think we had, yeah, I just, I actually, I think I got done reading that. That was amazing. So the other aspect of reading is, especially when you can read about others' accounts of what's happening in life. And it's, it's you'll remember it better than if you were listening to an audio book. I'm not against audio reading. I just don't know that it, it counts the same as actual reading because it reading an actual book will train you to concentrate more. And you can see what you're reading. You can see the words, so you learn to be a better speller, too. Green eggs and ham. All right. Lesson. Peer pressure works. Oh, I like <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. And then also, so I'm sorry, I'm using so way too much here. Education and entertainment tends to be blended together for me. If it's not entertaining, I won't be educated by it. And as our favorite Vitalia would say, if it's not entertaining, I'm not going to do it. I'm thinking... Damn straight. Why should I do it? I mean, life is too short. Might as well enjoy what you're learning. And as uh, our favorite teacher, Chris Sacconi, would say, everything in life is a learning, a teachable moment. And so are books. So the, the books are a great way to teach as well. I actually took a book written by a veteran called The Adventures of Little, Big Adventures of Little Pickles. And I turned the children's book into a tutoring lesson for my German students. It was really fun. They all, they put their costumes on and acted out the parts of an English book in German. It was really fun. Okay, now as far as the third E, the entrepreneurial part of reading, since you've gone through entertainment, education, and entrepreneurial, I have taken it on myself to read others' books aloud and make a video of it for my YouTube channel. And one of the books I have debuted was Rise and Shine by Michelle Perdue, who's been in, in this group several times. How to Live a Life of Resilience and Perform at Your Potential. She has a one-person act coming up in October. We're looking for a theater in case you know somebody who has a theater that wants more attention. And it's a fun way to introduce authors to society. I also just read aloud one from Katie Malumbi, who I hope to bring to Power Talk sometime. It's uh, Purposeful Health, which is a, 
wonderful book showing the holistic aspects of health and that it's not just about nutrition, it's not just about walking, it's not just about being social, it's everything that makes a person healthy. Really interesting. And it's not full of spaces, it's actually dense with philosophy, practical philosophy, ways of explaining why things might have bugged you previously or why things have worked previously and you want to repeat it. The other aspect of entrepreneurship would be that if you want to, like I mentioned earlier, practice voiceovers, you can go to website acx.com and submit an example of yourself reading. Like I have done with the Irma Bombeck. If you wanted to give an example of how you read humor, then you practice it aloud a few times and then you record yourself if you haven't had clients before that you used a humorous bit for, then you grab something that's a humorous bit of writing and record it and then say, this is your experience so far. And that helps a lot. So I've used the video, I've used it to a, a written piece to do audio. And then there's the classic making a speech out of books, referring back to books. What do you think I'm doing now? But it's just, I think we could really squeeze the joy out of that tool of education, which is books. The next time you feel like you're gonna fall over asleep in your book, stand up, enjoy the heck out of the printed word and let me know your favorites next time you see me. Thank you. Awesome, Lou.